Our new unit is called the dynamic Earth. Scientists often describe our planet as being dynamic, right? There are a lot of different adjectives that you could use if you were going to describe the Earth. Dynamic is the one that's used the most often. And the reason for that is that dynamic means constantly changing. And our planet is constantly changing. In our new unit, we're going to learn all about how the Earth's crust changes and how it has changed. And we're going to look for evidence to support the idea that the Earth is changing. The way that we look for evidence is by looking for areas where there is bedrock that's exposed. We call these areas outcrops. So we're looking for rocks that are exposed so there's no vegetation on them, there is no grass, you know, certainly we need rocks that don't have roads on top of them or buildings or houses. So we want to look for outcrops. When you're on the highway, when you're driving down the Hutchinson Parkway, the rocks on the side, those are outcrops. They actually have evidence that the earth has changed in them. In our last unit, we learned how sedimentary rocks are formed at the bottom of water in horizontal layers. This is sort of the basis for how we know the Earth is changing. And there's this principle or a law which is called original horizontality. It basically says that sedimentary layers of rock originally form in horizontal layers. When you look at the Grand Canyon, you can still see that those rocks are in horizontal layers. You can see this in lots of other places too. Uh, I took this picture in Glacier National Park in Montana, and you can see these rocks here are horizontal. This picture is from Canada, where you can see horizontal layers of sedimentary rock. So what's the evidence to support our claim that the Earth is dynamic, that it's constantly changing? Well, let's go through six pieces of evidence. In this picture, when you look at the rocks, you'll notice that the rocks at the top are still horizontal. But when you get near the bottom, they're not. If we look at this layer of red rock, as we come across, right over here, it curves and it goes down, and then it continues to the left. These rocks, these layers, were folded. So when we see folding, that's evidence that the crust has changed. Something's happened to it. Folding can create mountains like this one. I want you to notice these two vehicles at the bottom. One of them is a bus, and that gives you a sense of scale. That gives you an idea of how tall this mountain is. This mountain was formed when horizontal layers were folded and got uplifted. They got pushed up. These mountains are also from Glacier National Park, and you can see if you follow any of the layers, you'll notice that they're folded. These mountains as well, if you follow these red layers of rock, they are folded down the mountainside. So this is all evidence that the Earth's crust has changed. Whoa, look at this rock. The force that it would have taken to create this much folding would have been a tremendous amount of force, probably formed when two plates, two of Earth's plates collided. I mean, there's significant deformation in this picture, significant folding. This picture, you can see a little bit of folding on the right side over here. All right, now these rocks are not folded, but they're also not horizontal anymore. So something else happened to these rocks. You'll notice that they are sort of arranged diagonally. We call this tilting. So tilting is the second piece of evidence to support the claim that the Earth is changing. And we can find tilted rocks all over the place. This picture is pretty cool because the amount of tilting in this, these rocks are almost vertical at this point. So they would have been formed horizontally and they were tilted significantly. This picture was taken on the side of a highway somewhere. And if you look at the purple rocks, you'll notice that they go on a diagonal tilt. And then you have the yellow rocks that are tilted diagonally. And it continues all the way down. These reddish rocks are tilted. The grayish rocks are tilted. The rocks over here are tilted diagonally. These rocks, pretty cool, tilted diagonally. 
Now, these rocks were not folded and they weren't tilted, but they're clearly changed because there are these cracks in them. A crack in a rock is called a fault. So this is called faulting. And faulting is more evidence that the earth has changed. Faulting is just the cracking or the fracturing of rocks. Normally, faults are associated with earthquakes, which we're going to learn all about in our unit. You can see in this picture, let me erase these marks here, there is a big fault going down the middle, right underneath or right on top of that man's head. So here's the fault. And we can tell that there's a fault because not only can we see it, but the red rocks here no longer match up with the red rocks here. So we can tell that the whole left side of the fault, the rocks were pushed up. And on the whole right side of the fault, the rocks were pushed down. Okay, so that's faulting. In this outcrop, you can see lots of faulting. You can see lots of cracks in the rock. Now the next piece of evidence has to do with fossils. You've probably seen creatures that look like this and that look like this. And based on what you know about them, you probably know what kind of environment they live in, right? Yeah, they live in water. These are marine creatures that lived or lived in water. Sometimes we find these fossils way up high at the top of mountains. These rocks, these are actually fossils of bacteria that are called stromatolites. They were actually the first life forms on Earth, the first living things that we have evidence of. And I took this picture at the top of the Rocky Mountains. Well, they lived underwater. There's no water near the top of the mountains. So this is evidence that if you find fossils of marine organisms at the tops of mountains, it tells us that the land was once underwater and it's been uplifted. It's been pushed up. Interestingly, all over the top of Mount Everest, which is the tallest mountain on the Earth's surface, all over the top of it, there are fossils of shells, clams, and other creatures that only live in water. So that tells us that the top of Mount Everest was once underwater. And we're going to learn all about how Mount Everest formed in our unit. Again, these are stromatolites. These are bacteria fossils. These bacteria lived underwater. And this picture was taken at the top of the Continental Divide, which is the tallest mountain in North America. Along the same line, if you find ripple marks or mud cracks at the top of mountains, it also tells you that the land was uplifted because ripple marks and mud cracks form underwater. In fact, there's a good chance that if you've been to a beach, you've probably felt ripple marks with your toes in the sand. And mud cracks form when there's mud, you know, near the shore of a lake or something in that type of environment. So if you find these at the tops of mountains where there's no water, it tells you the land was uplifted. The last piece of evidence that I'm going to talk about in this video is the opposite of uplift. If you look at this landscape, you'll notice these holes. These are sink holes. They are evidence of subsidence. Subsidence is the opposite of uplift. It's when parts of the earth sink down. And there are other ways that we can prove that subsidence happens, and we'll talk about those in class. But these six pieces of evidence support the claim that our planet is dynamic, it's changing. In our new unit, we're going to learn about other uh, pieces of evidence that the Earth is changing, such as earthquakes and volcanoes. And we're going to learn about tsunamis. We're going to learn about the Earth's plates and how they're moving and changing the Earth's surface. So I hope you're excited to learn about these things. This happens to be one of my favorite units of the year. And tomorrow I'm going to give you a little quiz to see how well you understand the pieces of evidence that you saw in this video. See you tomorrow.